We were just finishing the letter from the Department of Transportation, which said, uh, this information is helpful to me, even though I feel sure it helps you very little. No, no kidding, gave him all the information. Please let me know if I can be of any service in the future. Simon, uh, A-C-H-E-S-O-N, Program Analysis, Program Review and Analysis, uh, analysis Division, <coughs> Department of Transportation. So, uh, what I, as I said, try to do always is, is get 402 funding from NHTSA uh, to get to the, for the states to uh, the local, I would tell local communities they would have to apply to their state departments. Okay, this is, I probably should spend a little bit more time on this because this is important. A lot of people don't know this and this definitely has to be in our final copy that we make of the, of the video. That what I always wanted to do is to have uh, the local communities write to, I thought they could just write like to Washington DC one standard place and they can't. They had to write to their local Departments of Highway Safety, Department of Public Safety for 402, under 402 funding and called matching funds, okay. I think I explained this a little bit on video take, on the video number one. Um, and then we had to get involved with the governor's highway safety representatives. We talked about that before. So the governor's reps would know us on a personal basis uh, in each state. And then, and yet you have to remember, we were doing all of this. We were telling local communities to write to your state departments. We were spending money doing that. We were spending money, lots of money, to join the National Governor's Highway uh, Safety Representatives Conference and a, and a National Association of Governor's Highway Safety Reps. I think our dues uh, early on was like $600, and then you had to pay for booth space, booth space and, and flying to, but it would cost several thousand dollars. I was spending all this money not getting one penny back to the center. It was just to help the local communities. And then we were hoping the local communities would buy the certificates and the t-shirts and so forth to help uh, keep the center going. Some did. Most of, many of them did not, unfortunately. Okay, so uh, that's why that's so important that we somehow nicely put that in there that we did an awful lot for the local safety towns that 99.99% of them don't even know we did. We would send a letter out, a little letter in the tarp, in the traffic light brochure, and it would tell them different ways to get funding. And that one of them was to contact their Department of Highway Safety, uh, to contact any foundation funding. And this was early on, early in years, in the late 70s, uh, when people didn't know how to do, do this. They really, seriously, this was not, not available. Uh, okay, November 20th, 1979. Dear Safety Towns friend, we are very happy to announce that we are having an evening with Bill Cosby, Friday, February 15th, <clears throat> 1980, at the Front Row Theater on Wilson Mills in Cleveland, Ohio. Our tickets, show tickets were $9.25. The show started at 8 p.m. We had VIP packets for $25. Can you believe this for fundraising? It includes a cocktail party, Clancy's magic presentation, a barbershop singing, an entertainment, a bronze Bill Cosby Safety Town keychain, and the show ticket was for $25. Can you believe that? And we didn't fill the house, but it was not because of that. It was because Bill was coming in the Front Royal Theater um, for three days, I believe, with he made arrangements with the theater. What we did is we brought out the Friday show. So when, pe when people were calling in, our people were calling in, thinking they could get their tickets from the Front Row Theater, and they were telling them they were sold out for Friday, so they were buying the tickets for other days. And then when they found out that the proceeds were only going Friday, 
Front Row Theater wouldn't let them exchange it, and we had one one big, big time, bad time with that, with some of those people at the theater. Okay, now, and I hope that you can see this. I had an idea back in, oh, probably late 78, early 79, because safety towns, there were, some people wanted safety cities and safety villes, and those had been going on for a long time. We decided maybe to change the name of the organization to Child Safety Center. I don't know if you can see this, Child Safety Center. And then Child Safety Center, it looked like a child. Well, again, we were, this was at a time when people were still very conservative. Um, a lot of older people were still in the top management. And the people, anyway, that we were working with, that I was working with, said, oh, that's too childish. The corporation people won't take you seriously. It's a toy thing and so forth. And of course now, you know, the last, how many, this is 1998, the last, what, six, seven, eight years, um, maybe longer, maybe 10 years, it's, that's the end thing to do, do everything with the kids. And then I was going to build a house, one of those little safety town houses, and I was going to put safety town on the bottom, and then another, uh, like a siding, put safety city, safety village, safety ville, but the foundation was Safety Town and it grew that way. And um, here's, I have all the names, I don't know if you can see it here, but that's what it is, all the names on the side. I still think that's a clever idea, a cute idea. I think I'm gonna make a Xerox copy of that too, I like that. Okay, now these are all the drafts that we had uh, on some of the child safety thing. Let me show you some of the cute things we had so you could. Okay, I think I have another sheet there. Hold on. Okay, that's safety for cats. Okay, see we wanted this. Let me turn this down. Yep. Can you see that child? Child safety center. Okay. And then on this side, we were going to have something like this safety for kids. On this side. So that the they were almost identical. Then we had different variations of it. Okay, we had here one a little bit more fancy. Oh, that was cute. We should have probably proceeded with that, but who knows? We might we might do something with it in the future. Child Safety Town Center. Cute, cute idea. That's all the paperwork we just dabbed and dabbed away, did some doodling. Okay, um, that was in 79. Okay, now I think we're starting, yeah, guess what? End of 79, we're starting 1980. I don't know, there, this is just my rough draft, but this um, might be 79, 80, it's 80 with a question mark. I'll have to check with PR News and see when I followed up after Denny Griswold. This is to uh, um, Lee Iacocca, man from Chrysler, and I met him at Denny Griswold's one of her big events in New York, and uh, she was very gracious and introduced me to him and, and really built me up so beautifully, and I just wish I could have followed up with him. But see, th those people, you have to really, uh, yes, you hear about the, you know, once in a while where they find somebody and say, gee, I felt sorry for him. Fortunately, I was that way with Prudential with Cole Lewis. That was my, he was my godfather. Uh, but usually you have to go into these people at their level through a PR company, through an advertising company. Uh, you take them out to a big lunch, huge lunch, dinner, overnight for a weekend or, you know, whatever. Uh, that's, or a golf game, that's how you did it. And I didn't have those people to do it. Frank would have loved to have gone to the golf game, but he couldn't take off of work. And, and, and he wasn't that knowledgeable in PR. He really didn't like PR anyway. Okay, dear Mr. Iacocca, time means money, so I will get right to my request. I need your help. Um, something about a loan or something, this is a rough draft. Uh, just like you, we are at the crossroads. Communities are requesting programs, materials and assistance speakers. Uh, why now? Why, why is this important to us now? There's the child safety issues, the strangers and abuse, missing children, belt laws, and so forth. And um, would you kindly uh, send 
Iacocca, Mr. Iacocca, follow up to the attached letter and support this. I sent a letter to Denny Griswold asking her to, to send a follow up. So somewhere we have a follow up on that. Some people in Cleveland I have here on just on a sheet of paper, too self centered. See only the small picture, do not see the whole picture. Biggest problem in Cleveland is the racism within the Cleveland school systems trying to get safety town. No doubt about that. At least the people I was working with. Um, and now that was as far as getting the safety towns in, into the school system. That was a big problem. And with the police department and all that was just, just totally a mess. But as far as the people not seeing the big picture, that was for the corporation people. They just did not understand. Uh, is that letter from Joe Vecchione stated at the breakfast? They did not understand that we were an international organization headquartered in Cleveland. They just kept saying, do something for Cleveland, but yet nobody wanted to put a committee together to work with the schools and work with the politicians or whatever because they knew what a problem it was. Okay. Uh, I talked, of course, then with Billy Anderson uh, after meeting with him in Nashville. He talked about Hank Snow doing a time with ch child abuse uh, to explain our parents' session, get, get parents working together during a TV show. Hank Snow talked uh, in support of child abuse, and I thought the idea would, uh, maybe we could work on something together, but again, nothing gelled from that. Here's a note that I must have left, one of my many notes that I left to Jackie. It says, Jackie, please double check your work. Clancy dates were mixed. You charge 10 puzzles instead of 10 sets of puzzles for Michigan. We can't make any errors. I was so concerned about that because we were a young organization and I wanted everything to be perfect. And Jackie, I apologize again uh, how strict I was at times, but I think you found out later on when you started going with me to some of the meetings uh, that people, we were, we were a, a small team in a major league, um, on a major league playing field, and that's why we, I, I knew that, and uh, I think you understood that as you started going out with me to some national meetings and so forth. So, but anyway, this is what I had to write to her. Uh, please read. The book every morning, uh, I always had a book of what had to do. Type up consignment shirts and orders. Uh, type up Kim's order first that you took on Friday. These days, Jackie, these days are very pressing for me. I need you to follow through on every phone call, etc. Please organize opening dates, a chart, make a chart for me. Be sure after typing any invoice, or consignment that you list the items on the one sheet we worked on, the yellow and white invoice copies. I'm not too sure what that was about. We can't afford to lose any orders or consignment. Thank you very much. I always manage to say thank you. <laughs> Again, I must ask you to be alert, uh, especially when I'm out of town. I realize the pace has stepped up, but every office has days when it's crucial to meet deadlines. Thank you for understanding. Okay. Now, we went to, uh, I, I think this is 1980, again, I have a question mark, but um, <clears throat> we went to see, and I think I talked about this before, we'll have to add this in, uh, that Mike Vance is Creative Learning Centers, and he was, I know we talked about this before, he was um, Dean of University. Dean of Disneyland University out in California under Walt Disney, Walt Disney's right-hand man. And he was saying that one of the things that Walt Disney did is when Walt Disney came up with an idea, he would have a big wall and he would put the word like parade on the wall. And people would come in and say, what, what does that parade mean? And Walt Disney would say, what does the parade mean to you? And somebody would say, um, marching bands. And so they'd say, all right, put marching bands on. So somebody would write a sign, marching bands, and tack that up. And some, what else it is? Uh, clowns, okay, put clowns on. Um, floats, put floats on. And he just got everybody's input and, and put it on the wall. And he also told, he told us lots of things. Um, that Walt Disney ever called his secretary. A secretary, was an, she was an associate. 
and she always sat in the same room. He didn't in one. He sat in one corner, and she sat in another corner, uh, which I thought was a great idea. In fact, Jackie and I pretty much did that, um, except we had the way the rooms were. We had to sort of sometimes break it down, but um, I thought that was a nice idea. Uh, we went through. Um, and he went through a lot of things that uh, Disney had talked about. <clears throat> and Jackie and I think I went one day, and then the next day I think we took Frank, and I can't remember the other person we took, but I have, I th it's in the, in the minutes. Um, and, of course, Frank being so creative, um, wrote some signs. I see something here, let me write, maybe tells me. Jackie and I attended a two-day seminar at Cleveland Convention Sc Center by Mike Vance right-hand man to Walt Disney for years. Frank attended the second day with us. After that, he made, made these and put them all over our office. That's what Walt did to get input. Fun, we had a great seminar. Okay, so he put he came in early, or I don't know if Jackie and I went to a meeting or something, but he, it was, I think, on a Saturday. We worked Saturdays and Sundays. And he came, went in the office, and he put these all over our office walls where it was appropriate. Walt Disney didn't even Walt Disney didn't invent a better mouse trap. He invented a better mouse. Okay, that was one thing he had. And this, and then he had different areas where he put, would have signs. Walt Disney would have signs. So Frank had this planning area was over my desk, or on my wall behind my desk. Um, this one said, organizational chart, Dorothy and Jackie. What did you expect? General Motors is <laughs> what he has underneath there. <laughs> that, that was great. Okay. Um, let's see, this one said, take away Jackie's desk, sit on a floor with cushion, because we were talking about having an open area. <laughs> so we just came in and Jackie and I just roared for I don't know how long. Take a fun break. Drink from the top of your cup. <laughs> okay, you you would have to know my husband to know this sense of humor to be funny. <clears throat> There's this planning space. If you didn't call them meetings, they were planning areas and planning space. No meetings allowed. That's what Frank said. Okay. I'm glad I say these. I'm talking about the parade, rain parade canceled because of bad weather. Okay, these are this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> ideas I don't got none do you <laughs> this is from a man in chemistry at the university okay children who go to safety town should be asked what they like about it kool-aid and cookies <laughs> okay. uh, yeah Mike Vance said um, Walt Disney always wanted input from people you know what what did you think about it and always evaluated okay <laughs> I love Mildred now to get hit by a DM truck. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Even then, we still weren't very pleased with this lady. Didn't like her at all, what can I tell you? Walt Disney does strange things to chickens with a fork. <laughs> My husband's sense of humor. Insight. I, I'm not sure what, what this was all about, but uh, had to have something. That doesn't recall. Okay, this is in, inside and outside so must have something to do with in and outgoing mail, maybe a different way of wording. I don't know. In and out. Oh, oh, oh well, maybe I see this coming. Here comes Farsight. <laughs> now, I don't know what this was. Maybe maybe Jackie or Frank would remember, but I don't. <laughs> and then we have Hindsight. <laughs> maybe this was leading up to this. I don't know. But that's cute. <laughs> Okay, that was the whole thing from Disney. Isn't that the funniest thing? That's what kept me going is <coughs> why I would get frustrated at him at times for not letting me really run with a lot of the PR, but of course we didn't have the money and we he certainly wasn't going to borrow any more money on the house, so I, I can understand that, but uh, he certainly made up with it for with all the, the sense of humor and, and keeping me laughing. Okay, here's another, oh my, these, um, we went through this before, another year where Frank and Lynn 
And I think Jackie and I, different times, different directions, take 270 more north, 90 to east on 90 to 91, and take the um, coloring books and t-shirts to the Euclid, to Lakewood, Ravana, all over the place. Brexville would drive all over. Not charge them, do it at our own expense. <coughs> I know, I know, we could be that dumb. 1980, I just wanted to be nice to people. Uh, still want to be nice to people. Except now I'm more, much more realistic that you have to pay for things. Things aren't free. Okay, here's a nice, um, we start adding more advisory board members. I think I talked about maybe Ted Reynolds. He was Sherwin Williams Safety Director and member of the Safety Council, Board of Controls with me, and he served down for a while. And let's see, we'll put this one here. Fred Pappenfus, I talked about that man. And Ruth Miller, these are all people that we had on the, on the advisory board, so we can put the advisory board panel box up here. Okay. Uh, now, January 10th, 1980. Remember in 1979 we sent out that notice for our show with Bill Cosby, which is in February. Here are, we made huge posters. I don't know if you could see. This was the actual one in the newspaper, and then this is a Xerox copy. But we made large posters. Uh, Bill Cosby's picture, you can see how big they were. I think they were even bigger than 17 by 2. I think they were 2 feet by 3 feet. And um, put them all over town. And still couldn't sell. Like what it was, Capacity was 3,000, and I think we sold 2,000 tickets. And... Um, but it was a bad storm that night, but people didn't know that weeks in advance when they could have ordered. Uh, people thought 925 was an awful lot for tickets at that time. We tried to be fair, but that's what we had to do, so we made very little money. I don't even think we made any money by the time we paid for everything. Okay, and we'll put that one. I want to put that one in the... All right, March 8th, 1980. And this was a cel uh, celebrity roast for Dorothy Fulheim. Uh, they roasted her. This was a nice lady I talked about before. Uh, we weren't on the program. We just attended because it was a, a fun roast. And it was done by a lot of the local TV personalities. Gib Shanley, who was a sportscaster for years. Doug Adair, Tom Boardman, the Cleveland uh, Press. Ed Servanak from TV5. Bill Flynn from TV8. Bill Gordon, who was a great... Uh, Radio Dish Jackie, Fred Griffith, Herb Cam, Mona Scott, Lynn Sheldon, Don Webster. So they were, uh, it was a nice event. Nice. And they all worked with me on Safety Town, uh, especially Jan Jones and Fred Griffith, some of those people. March 12, 1980, a letter to um, Herb Hoppy from me. Uh, dear Herb, we realize your schedule is extremely busy, but do hope you take a few minutes next to read the text. We would like to put this in the mail Saturday at the latest, so we had to do some legal things we had to send out. And here is a sheet, the first year operational packet for 1980. I had Jackie made a chart that we talked about before. On the, We had one for every state. This was Illinois, Missouri. We listed the safety towns. We listed the year that they started, their first year, and then we listed how many things they ordered so we could see at a glance. We discontinued this uh, it was just too difficult to, to keep up. We kept it a couple of years, maybe two years or so, and then we discontinued. Okay. I Again, I don't know what year we started the Safety Town Citations. Um, I'll have to check that back in Cleveland and add that in. But we would send them two uh, citations. One would go to the mayor of the community on behalf of the citizens, and one would go to the president of the sponsoring organization. And one citation would read, 
uh, dear friend, congratulations on this special event, the official opening day of your Safety Town, becoming registered, credited, and certified under National Safety Town Center. This citation represents our deepest appreciation to everyone who in some way became involved with our life-saving program. You are to be commended for your interest, time, and effort that you have put into organizing and conducting your Safety Town. As a result of your initial interest and concern in the prevention of accidents, Safety Town has become a reality under the sponsorship of your organization. On behalf of everyone at Phil with the organization, we are very pleased to extend our sincere congratulations on a job well done and offer our best wishes for many years of Safety Town success. Thank you for caring and sharing. And then we had Bill Cosby. We had a stamp, his approval put a stamp here. And then I would sign my name here. And the other one was uh, to the mayors. Let's see if we have. I don't have. These are all for the. Uh, the one for the, uh, the the mayors was just a little, a little different wording. Okay. And we'll have those. Now this is from August 27th, 1980. Belleville may become safety town soon. Now, Belleville was very close to Mansfield, uh, not you know a few miles away. Might have even boarded it on one end. And yet, Mansfield was safety town 1937 in Belleville. We helped set up in 1980. Unbelievable. And the same thing we did with Ashland and all the other areas. Uh, Wednesday, June 25th, 1980. This is uh, just an article, Miniature Town Provides Safety Model for Children. This is Tualatin, Oregon. And we were really excited about this. I like this because it shows how the local JCs and the Eagle Scouts were painting the black top. Okay. This is the National Community Education Association. As I said, I was very, very involved with them, I believe so strongly in their principles. It's a national PTA and USJC's endorsed community education and we did as well because we were, uh, although we're not in print, but after this I wrote them a letter and said that uh, they could certainly use our organization. Um, that National Safety Town Center proudly salutes national community education and I listed the safety towns that were sponsored by community ed and um, put together a nice letter to send to them. Okay, here's another fun thing, again, from my husband. Uh, no, it's from me. I wrote to my husband, Dear Honey Bunny, I was very tired and went to sleep about 6.30. Please wake me up when you get home. I'll be home. I'll help you eat the fish. Me, the lady in your bed. And he must have went fishing. I came home, and um, I was just tired. Now, here's something from him to me. He would do this once, frequently. Uh, not this type of letter, but do something funny quite often. Dear Safety Town Wife, <coughs> your cooperation in filling out the enclosed questionnaire will be greatly appreciated because we used to get so many of these questionnaires to fill out. Is the typing satisfactory? He was an excellent typist, uh, and he would help me type a lot of letters. Is uh, the format, and this was probably in the early years, even probably before I had Jackie. Is the format correctly placed? Do you realize that I typed this damn thing until my fingers bled? <laughs> you must have had a long report or proposal for me. Usually, he, that's true, he would do the proposals later on in, in the late 70s because Jackie had enough to do it to keep up with the work. So he would, um, at home, type up the uh, thing. And he did this because he knew how, how strict I was. I wanted everything had to be perfect. I find the typist I find the typist that did this excellent job was handsome, sexy, talented, all these. I'm supposed to check all these. Okay, this is a questionnaire from here to me. How did you get into this crazy program in the first place? Tell now this is some some of my husband's humor. Tell Sammy to keep an eye out for me. And then he has a big joke because Sammy had his unfortunate accent with the eye. Of course, Sammy joked about it as well, so. If you know of anyone needing typing done, please have them contact me. I work cheap. <clears throat> fun, fun letter. I'm going to put that that way because that doesn't Okay. 
April 1st, 1980. This is from John T. Swan, Deputy District Attorney, Consumer Affairs Division of Napa County in Napa, California. And wrote and wanted information. Um, he had heard about us from the National, High National um, Highway Traffic Safety. It was in their article. Article was in their NHTSA, I should say. We got one from the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, one from uh, the Federal Highway Transportation in uh, Las, Las, Las Aso, California, Oswego, New York, from the Consumer Affairs Department. When it was in a government type situation, we would get a lot more requests from people in that from that category. I think we should probably put these now into the, okay, I'm going to put, I'm going to put that in a different file. Okay, this is the Supreme Court of Ohio, Columbus. This is Ralph Loker. He was a judge. Dear Dorothy, it was nice of you to invite me to the reception which you hosted in honor of the speaker at the annual safety council meeting, the annual safety council meeting last Tuesday. I enjoyed the reception as well as the banquet and the splendid address given by Chuck Livingston. Keep up the good work and with best wishes I am sincerely Ralph Loker. And I think Ralph was, I don't know whether he was president of the Safety Council, Greater Clinton Safety Council in, in the early years or not. But um, I completely forgot about this and so this is a very nice letter for him. Ralph Loker, I think he's passed away. This is the United States National Commission on the International Year of the Child, which was 1979. And this is from Jean Young, the chairperson. And Dear Mrs. Schlad, the 1979 Year of the Child presents a unique opportunity to examine the policies and programs that affect our children and families. And of course, I served on a, one of their committees. April 22, 1980, Bill Bryant, President of the Growth Association. <coughs> Now, my throat was great for a while. I sent him this letter, and I said, Dear Bill, what a super PR man you are for Safety Town. And that was true. Bill always tried to promote, always, not tried, he always promoted Safety Town whenever he could. I just don't know why he couldn't get the financial backing. I just never, I mean, he just did, anytime we had anyone come out of town, we'd go to the city club, and he'd take time and give him a pewter plate from the city club and do all these things, and yet, I could not get the big, big bucks, but so many people, I kept going and going, so many people just thought I had money coming in. They, and I, even though I told them, they, they just felt I was asking for more money. Uh, you know, that I was doing well with the money I had. And it was my money, and I kept trying to tell them, and they, for some reason they didn't believe that. Okay, I was very delighted to hear your complimentary comments about our organization at the luncheon last Tuesday. That was indeed a most pleasant surprise. As you know, it is not easy to be acknowledged by prominent officials within Greater Cleveland, since Cleveland is known for being conservative and must prove one's worth in success. Consequently, when I heard the president of the Greater Cleveland Growth Association recognize our organization, I think you can understand what an exciting moment that was for our organization. Thank you for presenting the pewter plate to Mr. Livingston. He was most honored. During our ride to the airport, he proudly admired it and remarked how nice it was to be recognized. <clears throat> As a result of this initial encounter with the Greater Cleveland Safety Council, I sincerely hope that your involvement and relationship with the Safety Council will increase in that we will see more of you at our functions. With kindest regards, Dorothy Schlad. Copy of Judge Loker's letter sent to him. Sure. Um, but see, that's as I said, not only with Safety Town, but I was, um, since I was on the Board of Control of the Safety Council, the Greater Cleveland Safety Council, that's the one under the National Safety Council, <clears throat> I tried to help promote them as well. And there's, a, that should be with the other part of Chuck Livingston, we'll have to add that in there too. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, this is 1980. I'm a little confused with that because it's the first we've done 1980. 
But yet I remember talking about Chuck Livingston before because I had to pick him up at the airport. <clears throat> okay, we'll find that out. We'll, we'll put this all together. <clears throat> Excuse me for this. This is from the Congress of the United States. I think what I'm going to do is make another copy of all my letters from congressional people and keep that in one brochure or one scrapbook and then keep this in the sequential order by the years, by year and date. I'm going to have to do that. Okay. This is from Ron Model, who my husband went to school with and knew, uh, Congress of the United States. And dear Dorothy, thank you for your kind invitation to attend the Cleveland workshop luncheon on May 6th at the Sheridan Hopkins. Unfortunately, Congress will be in session and so forth. See, now this should be in the workshop folder as well as in the congressional. Uh, here's another one from Con uh, Congressman Vanek, the same thing, having I asked him to attend. I always send them invitations to our sem seminars. Um, okay, this is J June 7, 1980, inside Eaton's estate, $4.3 million initial funding. Anytime I found anything like this in the paper about money, I contacted him. Now, okay, for those people who don't know, Cyrus Eaton was extremely wealthy. Uh, at one point he was considered uh, by a communist because I guess he had, was friends with people in Russia. And um, let's see, he also has about 1,800 books at his farm which are valued over $7,140, a subject which includes economics, world affairs, and history of Russia, China, and Cuba, reflect his efforts to try to establish peaceful co coexistence with communist nations. So he was a um, rather a controversial person. But I sent him a letter, and then because he didn't live too far from where we did, I... Um, I was going to go drive out there one time, but I called his wife first on the phone. And uh, she was very nice. I don't know how I got to it. She was very nice. And um, I, she wasn't aware that of the information I sent to him. Sent to, to him. I think I sent it to his office. No, I did send it to his house. I'm sorry, because I knew where he was. I sent it to his house. But she wasn't aware of that. But she told me that... Um, uh, she spent quite a bit of time with me, which is very nice. She said he puts all his money into the arts and that, you know, she didn't want me to waste any time of my time because he wouldn't do anything, so, which I thought was nice of her to tell me. Okay. But I tried. I tried. I said we were going to go sit on his doorstep and, and try to get in. We, we did go visit his house uh, in his farm, but we went there as chaperones with the school from, from uh, Solon's school system. All right, here we are again, our bi-monthly reports. We missed a couple of them in there. We don't have, we'll get caught up. Uh, we're going to do this at the end of whatever letter, letters come in. These were, All these letters were from <coughs> May and June. And here's a wrap-up of what we did for two months for May and June. I think this is, as I said, when we do it, this is another thing I want Xeroxed. Two sets, one to be kept here. With, in sequential order, but then I want a whole complete pack of bi-monthly reports. May, Ohio Community Education Association held its first held its annual meeting in Columbus on May 15th. Our president was among those in attendance to honor Ralph Waltman for his outstanding achievements in the community. Uh, Ralph is a member of the National Safety Town Center's Advisory Board. He was a, a superintendent of a school system out in. Um, uh, let's see, Geauga County, somewhere out there on, on the eastern part of the state. A uh, very, very nice man. Okay, then Westville Companies printed 30,000 coloring books for us. Again, thanks to Art Daniker. Congratulations to Oregon for the first state to ever, to ever have Safety Town Community send in their signed agreement, um, making each community an official. Oh, they had every, in Oregon every state that was in operation in 1980 when we became registered, accredited, and certified. Now, that brings up an interesting topic because I don't think 
we discussed this before. That in here, but you know what we did, and I won't have to repeat it. On the first video I did in Cleveland in 1986, that's video number one, I explained what we had to do there. Okay, 1980, that's correct. We had to do the RAC. Okay, workshops were conducted throughout the United States. These eight-hour workshops are designed specifically to instruct the teachers and police officers. Our president conducts each workshop, which means she drives thousands of miles, mostly at night. The, the enthusiasm she generates is a tremendous motivating factor for everyone who attends. Inflation attaches one reason why it's necessary to increase prices on some of our materials. We were, the country was going through a little inflation problem. June, the TARP meetings continued between the manufacturer of National Safe Town Center regarding the progress and reports on the durability of the TARP, resistance to fire, etc. Cetera, et cetera. The TARP will be in five sections with all markings and so forth with sidewalks. I can't remember, it was shortly after, or maybe before this, I think it might have been before this, we had a meeting in um, Middletown, Ohio, because that's where the Roy White, our original manufacturer, was. Um, not, he wasn't the manufacturer, he was our representative. For, from the, He knew of somebody who could manufacture, he was like the middleman, but <clears throat> he did the blueprinting and, and the design work and so forth. But we had, <clears throat> we were at a meeting, I think, in Columbus, and I had Dr. Leroy Dunn there and people from NHTSA, and I rented a suite, a nice big suite, so we could have these, and, and had some more d'oeuvres for these people. You have to be nice. That's why they think we always had money. Uh, but you had to do those things. Um, and here was, I think it was Roy White, or one of his assistants, had the tarp and was showing how sturdy it was and went to pull it, and it pulled apart. And I was so embarrassed after telling these people this is going to be durable. So that's what we, they went back to work and made a stronger chart. Okay. Okay, the National JC and JC held a convention in Cleveland June 16th through the 19th. This provided an excellent opportunity for Dorothy to meet many of those concerned. Approximately 50% of her safe towns at that time were sponsored by JC and JCS. And unfortunately, when the JCs and JCs merged, I think they lost a lot of chapters. And that was a few years down the road. National Association of Governors Highway Safety Representatives, remember those? And the National Safety Council and the Michigan Office of Highway, Saf Highway Safety Planning sponsored a Highway Safety Human Resource Symposium June 23rd through the 25th in the Catalog Center of Michigan State University. Dorothy Schleider was among 200 people selected to participate in preparing needs and assessment and evaluation of various aspects of highway safety fields, okay? Of course, it had nothing to do with Safety Town, but I took my, had a booth display and took all my things and talked about it anytime I could. Assembly of graduation hats and games, preparation certificates, buttons, keychains, and so forth were done by the volunteers, by the majority of the volunteers. Preliminary discussions were held by our president with, with suppliers to develop new materials. Thank you to all the coordinators on assisting and helping with the seminars and workshops. Okay, and then Safety Towns in the Spotlight. We had uh, Wyoming, Michigan. Um, JCS entered their 1970 town project um, and won the, they entered, I'm sorry, they entered their 1979 Safety Town project and they won the best overall project in community service for the state of Michigan. Congratulations to Darlene Clifford. Liverpool, New York. The Liverpool JCs won first place for Safety Town as the best project. This is one of four awards statewide. Congratulations to Lori Pachakas. I remember her in Liverpool. Bedford, Ohio, proves Safety Town does prevent accidents. Shortly after attending Bedford Safety Town, a five year old girl was approached by a man who offered her money to go with him in the car. She didn't go. Approximately one week later, she recognized the car and told her mother, who notified the police. The man was arrested. The little girl said she didn't go with the man and remember what his car looked like because that is what she learned at Safety Town. Boy, I don't remember that one. That's a good one. Chardon, Ohio. We are very proud of the Cuddy Sark Bicycle Club of Chardon. These dedicated young people pedaled 36 miles to raise money for their Safety Town program. Juanita Miller with the spark plug there in Chardon. Orange, Ohio, 
Jubilee Day was an event held in Orange on June 1st to inform the community of the various happenings throughout the city. Uh, the event featured um, foods and exhibition. The Safety Town booth, complete with our flashing traffic, was set up by Mike Fritz, Barb Pickle, and Lowell Rayburn was the police officer. Piqua, Ohio, does not use teenage instructors, but 32 certified teachers who volunteer volunteer their time to teach at Safety Town. Isn't that great? Cleveland, Ohio, Knoxville, Tennessee, and Cleveland, Ohio. A distance of 950 miles was driven in approximately eight hours. That can't be eight hours. In approximately 10 hours it would be. No. It's blurred. I can't, not, I can't see this. This was necessary to obtain our first shipment of shirts for communities operating safe town programs in the month of June. We are now working for the new suppliers. We are now new working with the new suppliers and are delighted that gave us the first shipment of shirts on credit. This was based on the agreement that we would pay for these shirts prior to July 1st. Okay? That's where we had the bad mix up of shirts. Coordinators in the news, George Kulik made arrangements with Sharon Green of the St. Louis Globe Democrat for an article in the paper. Colleen Puzak took the necessary examinations to receive her teaching certificate in the state of Missouri and Kansas. And congratulations to Frank Schlatt, our executive vice president. His exciting new building continues to receive fantastic national and international publicity, including Russia. See article attached. Okay. World safety news. Whales. Uh, there's some information about a whale uh, developed a new type of braking for for a bicycle, which is said to stop a bicycle much faster than the conventional rubber fiber compound brake model. And it says what it's made of. We did all kinds of information in this newsletter. USSR, a series of three postage stamps were issued in Res Russia recently, each with a different safety message. That's interesting. These themes related to the need for alertness, care of children, and speeding. Yugoslavia, two French tourists were driving in Yugoslavia and ran into and killed a cow. They were sentenced to prison for one month, and the magistrate said anyone should be able to miss anyone should be able to miss a cow on the road. Switzerland. Some months ago, we reported the Swiss authorities had banned children from riding in the front passenger seat of cars. What we didn't know then was that parents of drivers could be fined, which is logical, but also the children breaking the law are punished by having to work extra hours at school. This is in 1980. Maybe this. Germany. Children between the ages of 8 and 14 in about 30 North Rhine, Rhine Westphalia company, uh, communities received free light reflecting bicycle tires. Boy, did I talk about that for a long time at the bicycle conference and conferences. Okay, vouchers for free tires are issued on bicycles as bicycles are inspected. And the safety campaign was promoted to increase by an increase in fatal accidents by a decrease. Oh, by an increase in fatal accidents, that's why they had the, the, the uh, reflectors. Okay, I haven't seen these for 18 years, folks. Africa, a report comes from the 3M company that elephants and giraffes can play havoc with road signs in various parts of Africa. It seems they eat the sign signs to get the glue used in sign construction. It is the taste that does it. Yuck. They eat the, what are the signs made of that they eat the signs? No idea. It's, I'm reading what it says, folks. Sweden. A Swedish study shows children under 8 perform poorly in bicycle skills, skill test and probably should not be allowed to ride in traffic. No kidding. There is some improvement from 8 to 12, but according to the National Swedish Road and Traffic Research Institute, only 13-year-olds could pass all tests covering skills, attitudes, and habits. Yay. And then we have a Russian industrial publication has published an article after Frank Schlad's article. Here's one of my husband's articles, reduced and printed in Russia. That was in a major newspaper. So we are very, very famous people, Dusty. Okay. 
We put this out because we had to increase our price of printing, and it's at Kodak Booth prices as high as 75%, and we put that so they knew why we had to increase some of our, our rub fee. Okay, that is just such a good publication. I like that. Okay, this is an article, July 30, 1980, and this is done by Jill Sell. Jill Sell happens to be related to me, uh, related to my husband, uh, our cousin, their cousins, Jill's mother and my mother-in-law were sisters. No, I'm sorry, Jill's mother, Jill's father and my mother-in-law were sister and brother. And uh, But Jill Sell is a very, very nice young lady. Uh, of course, she has two grown boys now in college. Uh, and her, when her little boy was small, went to Safety Town in Twinsburg, and she wrote just a cute little note about it. Safety Town Lessons. I won't read it all, but it's very cute. It's bad enough having a husband who's a backseat driver, but now I have a four-year-old who thinks it's his duty to save his mother from all her perilous driving habits. Kenny just completed his week at Safety Town, a worthwhile preschool program if there ever was one. But I think he learned his lesson too well. Stop, stop, that light's red, he screamed, out, screamed at me while I was driving the other day. Yes, I know, but I can turn on right on red. That's not what my teacher told me. We're going to crash. Help, help. Kenny, honey, uh, there aren't any cars coming. Oh, yes, there are. Look, he pointed to a minute black speck that was 10 miles down the road. And that's, of course, because children have depth perception and can judge distance. Okay. That same night, my son said he was thirsty and asked for something to drink. I gave him a glass of water. Ah, can I drink this, he cried. Is it poison? What are you talking about, I asked. I just got it from the kitchen. My teacher told me never to drink anything by the sink. You're trying to kill me. <laughs> uh, as, it, as if that wasn't bad enough, my suddenly... Safety conscious son emptied a whole can of baby powder on himself so he'd be wearing white at night. He also wouldn't let me cross the road in front of our house to get to the mailbox since there wasn't a crosswalk there. And he demanded I put a seatbelt on the dog when I was riding in the car with us. Now, I don't know how much of this she did on the humor side because she has a great sense of humor. Um, I don't know if you said about the poison water. Who knows? Kids, you know, based on the terminology and the way it was presented, uh, could, this could all be true. At least now I know he listened in safety town classes. Yesterday the front door was locked when my husband came home from work. Let me in, he called He called to Ken. Who is it, my son asked. For heaven's sakes, it's, it's, it's Papa. Open up. Please. Oh, yeah, you're a bad guy who wants to give me candy. Go away. <laughs> my son peeked out the window and said quietly, Oh, are you sure you're dead? And uh, real cute. Just great article. Okay. This is another bi-monthly report, July and August of 1980. Uh, I really love these. Just love these. Reminds me of all the neat things we did. Newspaper editor honored Ruth Wirtz of the Sun newspaper was honored at luncheon in Cleveland July 10th. Anthony Calabrese, Ohio State Center, presented her with a proclamation on behalf of Governor, uh, half of the governor, on Governor Rhodes and Charles Messina, Mayor Sohn was there. And Dorothy Schlatt presented uh, me, that's me. I was there and presented Ruth a certificate of appreciation for the publicity she's given us since our inception in 1965. Um, that was nice to be part of that big event with uh, the governor and so forth. So uh, we were highly thought of in those days. Meetings were held in George Voinovich's office, mayor of Cleveland, regarding organizational plans. In attendance at the meetings were William Largent, Executive Secretary to the Mayor, Acting Mayor, Acting Safety Director, Fred Zabo, Administrator to, to the Chief, and our President. Dorothy Schlad uh, officially signed the agreement with Children's Press on July 18th in Chicago during a meeting with Fran Dyra, editor of Children's Press. During this event, they also discussed the format of six children's safety books. Dorothy will be writing for them. Okay, and there's more about the safety book story and how that started on the 1986 video number one. Fred Potenza, Administrative Vice President of the National Safety Council, and our president discussed 
activities and future plans, and that was in Washington, in uh, Chicago, I'm sorry, when I was meeting there with Children's Press. The National Safety Council Pedestrian Safety Committee held its meeting in Dallas, Texas in, on July 20th. Dorothy Schlad, the member of the committee, was in attendance. Sixth International Forum on Traffic Safety Syst Record Systems was held in Dallas, Texas, July 21st through the 24th at the Hyatt Regency. The program fe featured National Center for, St for, St for Statistics, uh, general sessions on pedestrian traffic safety, traffic enforcement, data requirements for highway improvement, driver improvement, control programs, et cetera, et cetera. Again, nothing to do with Safety Town, but uh, since I was in Dallas on the 20th for the National Safety Council, and they used to tie in these meetings, so that's why I'd be there for maybe a week or so. Okay, there were two men, uh, Jack O'Hare, Council of the Subcommittee on Oversight, for the House Public Works of the U.S. Congress, and Paul Yates, Minority Staff Director of the House Public Works Committee of uh, U.S. Congress, gave excellent presentations. Our president was in attendance at this event. Both of these men were very, very nice to me. Jack's wife, I think Mar Mary O'Hara, I think worked for the Governor's Highway Safety Reps at the time. But uh, I know we used to go jogging, a lot of us, uh, I, about six, seven, eight of us, and some mornings at these conventions, because you sit all day, we'd meet before breakfast and go jogging, and Jack O'Hare and Paul Yates um, and Mary, and I'm trying to think of the other ones, but uh, it, they were part of the Congress. They were Congress people, um, and uh, I can't remember from what state they were, but uh, they were very sympathetic, but again, couldn't do anything. And it's not that they couldn't do anything. We had to have all the books and everything prepared, and, and didn't have time to do it. Top TARP discussions continued uh, with the manufacturer. In August, we had an ad hoc committee of the Greater Cleveland Safety Council, which I was a member of. The American Driver and Traffic Safety Administration held their meeting in Columbus the August 11th through the 13th. I presented a paper titled Preschool Safety Education. Thanks to Gail Nichols for her assistance, and Gail Nichols was our coordinator in Michigan. National Safety Town Week, promotional information was disseminated. The letter was sent to each governor requesting their participation for our 6th Annual National Safety Town Week. Looking ahead meetings were uh, with various representatives from organizations will be held in 1981. Coordinators in the news, Dan Rodowski, Northeastern Ohio coordinator in Bowling Green, had transformed his El Dorado Cadillac into an elderberry Cadillac. Unknowingly, he parked under an elderberry tree and it turned, I guess, purple. Uh, Lori Pachadas from Central New York Quitter was named to New York State JC of the Year and Citizen of the Year for the town of Clay, which is where she started Safety Town. Much of this was due to her work at Safety Town, as it states. Finley, Ohio JCs were delighted with the overwhelming positive exposure they received from their community especially their local newspaper. Safety Town was the first project they sponsored that ever, that they ever received front page publicity for. We heard that over and over and over. <clears throat> A week in the bush in northern Canada was enjoyed by our president and her husband Frank, fishing and relaxing. After organizing and conducting those hectic workshops and all that traveling, uh, so forth. Well, most of the time on vacation, uh, she did spend hours writing new safety town books, uh, which was true because um, where we used to go, we would fly into the bush and we'd have our own cabin and our own lake. They would drop us off on a seaplane and we wouldn't see anybody for a whole week. Uh, I was really roughing it for me, yes. Um, chopping wood, Grandpa, the Grandpa, my husband chopped, Frank chopped wood and um, uh, 1980, we were grandparents then. Um, but uh, it was fun, and we had a small little boat, and he had a motor. I would go out with him and, and fish for a little while. I got very impatient. If I got a fish in 10 or 15 minutes, fine. If not, there was a little beach across from our cabin. He would take me there. I would write my books or write some notes on Safety Town, and he'd go around the lake and fish and come back, and then I'd go back to the cabin to fish and eat. And, and that was fun. But. Uh, I came up with a lot of ideas because it was nice and quiet and peaceful out there. Okay, and then we always listed uh, 
dates of conferences. Um, National Safety Congress, the Michigan Child Passenger Safety, Illinois Parks and Recreation, National Association for Education of Young, uh, Young Children was out in California, National Community Education was out in Denver, Colorado, and this was all for the next several months. We would tell people in advance in case they wanted to go. And then we had a, bit, a lot of bits and pieces. I don't think we need this. Um, Okay, this is something, let me see what it says. On behalf of the U.S. hostages in Iran, a million dollar nationwide fundraising campaign has been launched. It was announced on the 300th day of the Amer Americans' captivity, 829. Um, the money's by its initiator, PR Consul Burton Selbar, Glenview, Illinois. The money is to be equally distributed among the 53 hostages on their release or in case of disaster to their families. Okay, I'm glad that's over. World safety news. Shirley England, after a 12-year-old boy saw his elderly brother killed in a traffic, killed in traffic, he personally led a successful campaign to have a 40-mile speed limit imposed for a two-mile stretch of road where the accident occurred. He collected 300 names on a petition and presented to a local council. Great things. I, this is just unbelievable. Oakland, California. Safety conscious Steve Man, Mansheart relaxed in his bath reading an article, Waterfalls and How to Avoid Them. Stepping out onto a wet tile floor, he slipped and fell. Yeah. Okay. Rhode Island, the state legislature has approved a bill requiring persons transporting children aged three or under in the front seat of a vehicle to properly secure them in appropriate child restraint. Only Tennessee, among the U.S. states, has similar legislation. As I said before, Tennessee was the first. And there is an article that I reprinted that article from Jill Sell because I thought it was cute for our people to enjoy. <clears throat> this is... September 11, 1980, mailogram service, and this was from Bill Cosby, and this was sent, this was a big project for us. This was the first conference, the na first conference we were going to attend for the National Association of Governors Highway Safety Representatives. We wanted to make a big, big splash. We had Booth, I had Diane Emmerich who was working for the South Dakota Department of Highway Safety at the time. And I also had Gail Nichols. And Rudy Nichols, uh, her husband, was uh, an attorney. And I think he was, I'm not, I think he was running for the Senate, or thinking of running for the Senate in Michigan. He did later on and was in the Senate for many years. But anyway, I called out in California and asked Fran Shields, if we sent a sample telegram, if she could send, have it sent to each one of the governor's highway safety reps, uh, inviting them to stop and visit our booth since this was our first year and we wanted them to learn about Safety Town. Okay? Very clever. Very clever I was. Also, let me read to you what we, we put in there so you'll know. This one is going to Albert E. Goke, G-O-K-E Administrator, State Capital, Helena, Helena, Montana. As Honorary Chairman of National Safety Town Center, I cordially invite you to visit our booth number nine at your convention. While I cannot be there personally to greet you, I have autographed a picture which our representatives will present to you along with our antique gold keychain. We extend our best wishes for a very successful successful convention. Thank you for caring and sharing. Best regards, Bill Cosby. Isn't that great? Okay. These are things we're going to have to put together really nice in a scrapbook. And this along with a lot of things from Sammy Davis Jr. and all I want to put together and send to Bill Cosby because we've never really kept him up to date properly. Now, what was really funny about this convention, there is this nice, we had a very nice booth display, and I have a picture somewhere with Gail and, and uh, Diane. And here were these men, these grown 
man, again, still very conservative, they would come up quietly and say to us, to any of us, um, Gail, Gail, Diane, or myself, do you have my autographed picture from Bill Cosby? I mean, it was like a little kid coming up for a rock star, but they were doing it very discreetly because they were dressed. And then we hand them the, uh, uh, and Bill did. Uh, we sent them out to California. Now, whether he signed them or whether he had someone sign them, but they were all signed by Bill Cosby, the same picture to them personally. And they, so they each have a picture somewhere. Um, I hope they saved them. They would probably be dumb if they don't, but there's uh, so much, so many things that we did. It, it just, people have to know about this. And somehow, as I said, we've got to list this and put this in a book. And this is one very important thing that has to be in about Bill Cosby with this. Okay, this is October 20th through the 23rd, the 68th National Safety Congress. It's in Chicago. Now I'm trying to see if there's a, oops, yep, there's something in here, so it must be something. All right, I did speak there. Okay, this is, I spoke on Tuesday afternoon, October 21st. I spoke at 2.15 for an hour and a half, Safety Town Program and Organization, Dorothy Schlatt, Founder and President. And this was arranged by James Watson, who was the Safety Coordinator for the Missouri Department of Conservation in Jefferson City, Missouri. Uh, he had been working, uh, I think he attended some of our conferences, and I think Pat Edwards and um, Art Buchanan also knew him and worked with him in the state. And he, uh, there's somewhere, I know there's correspondence, he wrote to me uh, and asked me if I would like to. He was chairman of the session of the Parks, Recreation, and Conservation Division. He was chairman and asked me if I would like to present the program. So uh, we couldn't get in some of the educational sections, but we got on this program, and as a result of this, we had several, several inquiries, and a lot of people. We had, oh, maybe, I don't know, 50, 60 people in the, in the room at the time, and several communities uh, started the program after that. The very sad thing about that was from, from uh, with Mr. Watson, and I felt badly, is a few years later, um, I can't recall how long, uh, he was um, in the park doing just regular checkup work or something. I don't know what it is, uh, but I guess there was there were some gangsters in the park, and they thought he had a gun or something, and they shot and killed him. Unfortunate. It was very very sad. Okay. September, another one of our nice bi-monthly reports. They didn't look, I know they don't look very nice, but boy, they had so much information, just lots of information. And that's what I wanted our people to do. I wanted them to be informed. September, 6th Annual National Safety Town Week was very successful, thanks to the governors and so forth, and mayors. Nashville, Safety, Nashville Tennessee was the site of a two-day promotional public relations meeting between Fran Shields, Executive Secretary, Secretary Bill Cosby and our president, and Fran and I had a great time. Uh, we sat on stage, Billy Anderson Jr. took us around again, and took, we sat on, st on stage at Grand Ole Opry, and she'd never been to Grand Ole Opry, and, and she liked country western music. I'm, I'm trying to think, I think we met, um, oh, we met a couple of entertainers, I can't remember who, but uh, Billy Anderson introduced us to everyone. And um, we played some golf. She played with a set of clubs that Bill Cosby had given her. And she asked if I wanted to use one of the drivers, and I was afraid to, to, to get it nicked. And she said, no, no, here, take it, use it. Yeah. And it was, I did have a nice, have a nice shot, and they were nice clubs. And uh, um, just, uh, just a sweet lady. OK. Um, National Child Passenger Safety Seminar was held in, in Nashville, Tennessee, September 7th through the 10th. So I had to go back for that. 
National Association of Governors Highway Safety Conference was held September 14th to the 18th in Baton Rouge. This is the one I just got through talking about where Diane Smith and Gail Nichols and I were there at the Governor's Conference. Joan Claybrook was the featured speaker. In October, um, Governor's Traffic Safety Committee was held in Cleveland, Ohio, and I was on the committee, went down to there. South Dakota workshops, uh, workshop was very successful thanks to the effort of Diane Smith uh, and to Robert Clark. Uh, Robert Clark was one of the Governor's Highway Safety Reps, and as a result of Diane, he was a young govern Governor's Rep, and Diane made that happen along with uh, Renee Legal, I think it is here. Okay, they sponsored six safety towns that year. Um, they had me go in for a seminar in October and then one on how to organize and then went back again in the spring for a training seminar and then they gave each safety town I think $500 or something of like that to get started. National Safety Congress, this was held in Chicago. We talked about James Watson and that. And then I was involved with the Pedestrian Committee and the American Academy of Pediatrics and so forth. Um, Safety Town Expansion in Michigan, Gail and Rudy Nichols did a good job helping promote that. Coordinators in the news, Diane Bratt our, was our North Central Colorado Coordinator. And she was selected for a teaching position in Japan for the next two years. Rudy Nichols was selected as legal counsel for the United States National JCs, and they will be attending the International Conference in Japan in November. South Dakota JCs is, uh, will assist with the South Dakota workshop. Special thanks to Jim Blackburn of the Grandview Safety Town for all his assistance with the American Driver and Traffic Safety Conference on August 11th when we had there. He, prov he brought in um, little cars, and we actually had a little a room where the kids drove around the cars, and we set up the houses and had the, the kids of the attendees of the, net, of the driver ed conference. So anyone who came to the conference and brought their kids, because it was in the summertime, we had set up in a room where they could drive around a little safety town, and Jim Blackburn of Grandview, Ohio, brought all of his equipment and helped us do that. Now, a special welcome is extended to two new members of our Safety Town family, Katie O'Toole and Patricia Hare. They were interns. Some of the interns we had to pay. Uh, I don't know if we paid any. Uh, no, I don't think we paid. I said I think I said I would only take free interns. Okay, Katie O'Toole was a real cute gal, of course Irish, Katie O'Toole. Uh, let me just briefly hear, some of Katie's energies will be directed towards innovating many new projects geared to better informing Safe Town personnel and other individuals about the latest safety educational uh, equipment and so forth. She was in PR and was going to write some brochures and, and those kinds of things. Uh, Katie is a very energetic, enthusiastic gal. While attending John Carroll University, she was honored in Who's Who in American Universities and Colleges made the Dean's List of four years, received tuition, uh, re received the President's Honor Award, uh, um, served as President of the John Carroll Irish Club, of course. Her first official assignment was to attend the Greater Cleveland Safety Council Board of Control meeting with our President, who introduced Katie to various members of the Board, uh, including Judge August Pritel, Judge Frederick Coleman, Dr. Samuel Gerber, Ted Reynolds and Phil Howard. And I always do this with our young people. I thought if, it, if the introduction came from me, uh, having been in the safety field a long time, these people would think a lot more highly of this particular uh, person, whether it be male or female, rather than sending them up, sending them their cold. I always went with them on the first meeting, all the time, no matter how big the meeting or how small. Okay, uh, Patricia Hare is very talented and a creative gal. She taught nursery school, gave art classes to elementary school children and senior citizens. Uh, recently Pat constructed and painted a three-dimensional scale model of our safety town layout. Uh, we we're very delighted. She was more uh, artistic and helped us make 
little displays for our boots and boots and boots and things. Okay, more fatal collisions on wet pavement, and these are just articles. Okay, the National Safety Town Center wishes to express its most sincere appreciation to our 28 governors who participated in our sixth annual National Safety Town Week. And what I did is I took, we made a stop sign, and we put all their names and the states within the stop sign, just to make it a little different. And because we believe in family, and we thought this, anytime we'd find a nice article, we'd get permission if, if needed and put in. If not, we just use it. Hugging can improve your health, and we thought this was great. And that still applies today. I think we could probably put some of these things in today. And it would, uh, hugging is a miracle medicine that can relieve many physical and emotional problems facing America's expert says. Okay. The type of hugging I recommend, it, recommend is the bear hug, said Dr. David Bressler, director of pain control unit at UCLA. Use both arms, face your partner, and perform a full embrace hug. Okay. Got to remember that. Put that in our video. Okay. This was in the National Safety Council newsletter. Oh, I don't remember a lot of this. Safety Town comes to Congress. Dorothy Schlatt, founder and president of the National Safety Town Center, will be a featured speaker at the Parks and Recreation. So they gave it a nice build-up. And then we put a nice thank you to James Watson. Okay. Uh, Monday, September 1st, 1980. Two of my favorite people. One especially, more so than the other, but once they got married, they became a... Mona Scott was just a very, very sweet lady. She was a um, te television co-anchor, the news, 6 and 10, or 6 and 11, I guess at that time it was. And she married Doug Adair, who'd been there for many years. They were married for a few years and then got divorced, and she went on to be... Um, television in Orlando, and he stayed in Cleveland for a while, and then I don't know where he went. But she was so supportive of uh, my um, activities and tried to, to get us on. Uh, any Anytime I would send her information, she would try to get her director to put it on. A lot of times she did. And um, she and Jan Jones were very, very supportive. Okay, here's one of those things you have to do at the, at the end of the year, National Safety Town Center balance sheet. Okay. Let me just tell you here what our, our budget was. Uh, our cash was $1,306.51. Our inventory was $32,779. Our furniture and fixtures deficit. $1,935, because everything we had was so old. Accumulated depreciation was $131.75. Oh, I, I see. So, the, okay, the whole total was 1000 Our furniture, they said, was $1,803.25. Okay, so our total um, our total was $35,888.76. Okay. That was for cash flow. Uh, I guess what we need here is a statement of income and expenses at the end of the year. We received from merchandise, merchandise sales and workshop fees, because we charge the fee and for all the t-shirts and things. We sold $70,000, $70,248.86. Contributions, we got $15,000, and that was, of course, prudential, $85,000, $248. Of that, for expenses, supplies, and workshops, was thirty. That was a lot, and um, uh, having to pay for the food and so forth. Thirty-four thousand. Uh, well, and not only the food, but like for the governor's reps conference, paying for the booth display and all those kinds, and, and ATSI and all the conferences. Thirty-four thousand five hundred thirty-three dollars and twenty-three cents. Meetings and traveling. $12,393.57. A lot of traveling for those seminars and workshops. Salaries, $5,259. Uh, 
Printing, postage, and photocopying, 9,836. Telephone, 1,064, 644. I'm not even reading the sentence. Depreciation is $105, and other was $5,000. So we operated on an $85,000 um, budget, and that included, now I don't know how you figured, that included buying the, um, that we had to pay for the t-shirts. While we got in the $70,000 from the sales of the t-shirts, we had to pay for them. And I don't know what category he has that. I mean, supplies. I mean, that's probably under supplies, t-shirts. Okay. We had to buy the t-shirts before we could sell them. <clears throat> okay. Phew. Okay, this is November, December of 1980. So we're going to finish 1980. That's pretty good. All right. Um... In November, the governor's representatives of Highway Safety each received a packet which included a copy of Safe Town Publicity, comments, and so forth. So we followed up after we attended the conference, we followed up with a nice packet. Okay, Thomas Lankard, L-A-N-K-A-R-D, was chairman of the National Association of Governors Highway Safety Representative, issued a proclamation to National Safe Town Center for their involvement with the conference. Hmm, didn't know that. Michigan Child Passenger Safety Conference was held in Troy, Michigan, November 13th to the 15th at Troy Hilton. Diane Eaton, our Southeastern Coordinator, attended. Joan Claybrook was there and so forth. Illinois Safe Town Local Coordinators met with our President on November 12th to discuss plans. Illinois Parks and Recreation Conference was held at the Hyatt Regency November 13th to the 16th. Our President uh, presented Safety Town to over 200 people. Her presentation, Safety Town, an early childhood and early childhood education program, was extremely well received and, as usual, has generated enthusiasm and interest. Thanks, Greg Ripetti, Superintendent of Recreation of Hoffman, Hoffman Estates, uh, for all his time in making it possible. He made all the arrangements for that. TARP meetings were still going on. We wanted a lot of testing done for to get them fireproofed and make sure the paint was uh, all approved by all the standards. Preliminaries were held with the Cleveland business officials regarding a semi-annual Safety Town magazine and newsletter. Matrix International officials James Wopart and Brian Lesjack met with our president and executive pre uh, president to discuss promotion ideals. Matrix International was a um, Oh, they had supplies and materials for driver education, as most most of them did that I worked with. And he was coming. They came down to Cleveland for a couple of days. And what they were going to do is try to sell some of our merchandise uh, in and and merge with their organization in, as far as selling our materials and our our, our program as well. We would still be National Safe Town Center. But since we didn't have marketing people, these were marketing people, they were out at conferences, uh, we wouldn't have to go to a lot of the conferences, eliminate the booth displays and so forth, because they already had a booth display. Um, unfortunately, it worked, I think, for about a year, and then their funding was cut, and they went out of business and had to reorganize. So <laughs> we tried. We tried everything. December, Radio Television Council of Greater Cleveland held a meeting on December 3rd uh, in the Memorial Hall of Old St. Church. I took Jackie Herdlicka and Katie O'Toole so they could get to hear how to go about doing these PSAs and working with the media people, and especially since Katie O'Toole was interested in that area. Alexander's Flowers, Charles Alexander was our florist for the past 10 years, recently returned from Washington, D.C., where he was one of 40 florists who decorated the White House. Amy and Rosalind Carter assisted him, and uh, Chuck was uh, very nice. I don't think he ever, we ever did any promotion with him. We tried to think of different promotions, making a, having a flower, a Safe Town flower for a certain week or whatever, but again, all that takes time. And the, the amount of time and money you put in, you don't have, you know, doesn't come out that way. Jane Fonda was in attendance for the Cleveland premiere of 9 to 5. Prior to the initial showing, a reception was held at the home of Rena Blumberg, Community Affairs Director of 3WE and WDOK Radio in Cleveland. Dorothy Schlatt and Jackie Herdlicka attended the, 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 the gala event and had the opportunity to meet and talk with Jane Fonda. 
I'll show you a picture in just a minute. Thanks to the Cleveland working women for their delicious food, the idea for the film originated in Cleveland, uh, born of conversations Jane Fonda had with some of the Cleveland women working, and that was nine to five. Now, just stay there. Okay, I'm back. I have the, the pictures with Jane Fonda. <coughs> okay. <coughs> we have a couple of them. There's the first one. You'll see 9 to 5 was there. This is at Rena Blumberg's house, the cocktail party beforehand. There's Jane Fonda. There's Jacqueline Hurdlicka. She was tall. I think she was about 5'10". She was a tall gal. This man here was her bodyguard. And he was constantly looking uh, at and around people. I'm in front of him, okay? Now, here's another picture of Jane. And there's Jacqueline. And there you'll notice uh, he's looking around as a bodyguard just to um, look for people. You know, they have them all the time. And there was another picture. She's got a different hand movement. Okay. And there I am. There's Jane. And that's me. And that's Jacqueline. Not that we've got somebody that's her head, but I'm shaking hands with her and we're talking. Okay. And there's another picture. I don't know if I'm in the camera. I might be out of the camera. Okay. There's another picture here with Jane. That's Rena Blumberg. Very, very prominent lady in Cleveland, in fact, nationally, because she wrote a book about her breast cancer, um, successful breast cancer surgery, and um, which was several years ago, and toured the country with her book on many of the large national networks. And there's myself, and there's Jackie. And Jackie had natural curly hair, and she always looked so attractive. So that's um, that's a fun thing. That's those are going to go on the wall. On the wall, I'll put one of them here to remind us the rest are going to go on the wall. Okay. So that ends 1980. Oh well, as far as the major things, let's see what's on the back side. Those were the major activities. Okay, Clearwater, Florida <clears throat> was the home uh, for our president and her husband and in-laws for 10 days during the holidays because my husband worked the universities and uh, there was always time off during Christmas and New Year's, usually about two, two and a half weeks or so. Uh, later on they added more days, uh, so they got like three, three weeks off. So we started, when the girls were very young, uh, I don't know, maybe five or six. Uh, coming down to Florida, we just found that we felt better getting some sunshine. We always, of course, it stopped at Disney World. And um, um, that particular year, my, my grandfather, my uh, father-in-law, I'm sorry, was recuperating from lung cancer. And we all enjoyed the sunshine and had a good time. Excuse me. Okay, had to answer safety town call from Morgan. Okay, um, now we're going to go back to uh, saying congratulations to Franklin Herring. Oh, Dr. Herring was a uh, member advisory board. He received his doctor's degree on November 22nd, 1980. Our sincere thanks to Wilma Smith, co-host of Afternoon Exchange of WWS-TV Cleveland for being such a great sport in assisting with a surprise birthday party for Ted Reynolds. He was from Sherwin-Williams here as advisory board and he, when I went into his office one day, he had a wall of pictures of Wilma Smith, big ones, little ones, uh, like she was a big movie star out of, out of, you know, Hollywood, but she was great in Cleveland and a very attractive girl. When I saw that and he had a birthday party, we arranged, I arranged, I arranged for him, uh, to have, we arranged, I arranged to have him at a, a party at the Engineering Society right across the street from WWS 
we got a cake. I went to get her, and she knocked on the door and brought the cake in, and he went, he was hysterical. It was great. Uh, well, Wilma well, graciously agreed to, to our scheme, which included presenting Ted with a cake, and it was great. Uh, coordinators in the news, Diane Smith was recently married and is now living in Denver, Colorado. We extend our congratulations and best, best wishes to Diane and her husband, Al. Okay, um, when she became from Diane Smith, she went to Diane Emmerich, I believe it was. Okay, Linda uh, Rosinski, director of Fort Atkinson, Washington, Sage Town, is to be commended for the great job she did in preparing a report on their program. This will greatly assist their next year's chairperson. Darlene Clifford, I wonder what's happened to some of these gals. Southwestern Michigan coordinator is to be commended for excellent coordinating report for the time that she spent uh, personally visiting safe towns in her area. Gail Nichols, community affairs coordinator, her husband Rudy spent 70 days in Japan with the JCs. And let me see here. Uh, newspaper photographers, uh, photographers of Greater Cleveland love to photograph safe to town. They did uh, a lot of good publicity for us. Okay, how much are we willing to pay for safety? I gave a breakdown. And here's some world safety news. I thought this was great. <coughs> uh, all, all these, I think, are great. I don't know why we're not getting them anymore. We must have, uh, maybe they eliminated a subscription or they went out of business. It was world safety news. South Australia, an official study shows that when a driver is involved in a single car accident hitting a tree or pole, more than six in every ten have positive alcohol readings. Dublin, Ireland. From Dublin comes news that driver and front seat passengers are now required by law to buckle their seat belts. Fines for non-compliance are up to 20 pounds or more than $40. England industrial action, um, their, their strikes resulted in 9.3 million workdays lost in England in 1978. During that same period, accidents to disease and alcohol cons consumption at work resulted in 419 point million lost working days, according to the Br British Secretary of State for Social Services. So compared 9.3 million dollar workdays lost for strikes, but 419.4 million dollars lost with uh, accidents, disease, and alcohol. See, that's what I didn't do early enough. You have to had to prove to the business people. Now that's easy to prove because you, you deduct how many times people are off. You have a big company. You can figure it out. How many hours you work days you lose. But um, with ours, it was so complicated. They had to register at school. And then was the accident, uh, uh, what was the cause of the accident? And then they figured out it was just too complicated, too involved. Not necessary because it's an educational program as far as I was concerned. Okay, study documents, uh, protective value of child safety seats. I'm going there anyway, and why don't you buckle up? And here's the universe. Schlad says chemical waste properly disposed of. University of Ak Akron tracks chemical from cradle to grave. And there's, that's not a very nice picture of my husband, but that's a picture of an article. And this appeared in uh, the Akron University paper. And in, in this nice big little centerpiece, it said the biggest problem involving chemical waste is educating the public and eliminating their fears. We now have the regulations and enforcement procedures to prevent another love canal, says Frank Schlatt. And Frank has a very, very interesting story. Not, that's the actual facts after the right to know law. And when we do our personal video, and we'll have to make a note on this, make sure he talks about uh, the love canal and how that all... Uh, how it really started from day one until the unfortunate situation of the oozing. 
Okay. Uh, here's a letter <clears throat> from the National Association of Governors Highway Safety Reps. Remember we said uh, Tom Lankard presented us with the certificate. Uh, this is from Tom Lankard to Dorothy Schlad. The membership of the National Association of Governors Highway Safety Representatives has by resolution acknowledged the instrumental roles played by the industry support group in making our 13th annual conference the success it was, and I was part of that industry support group. The importance of your participation in the industry support group and your support for the association cannot be measured by tangible means. The educational display and the social gatherings play an integral and vital part of the advancement of our mutual goals in the field of highway and traffic safety. It is a great deal of pleasure that I accept and fulfill the direction of the association to convey to you my by resolution our appreciation for your efforts certificate enclosed and it says whereas and why be and all that whereas 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 and now therefore okay and uh, there's we, we duplicated pictures of jane i know terrible we xerox and we didn't have an you know, I look back at this, and it's a matter of a, a couple of dollars, but every couple of dollars helped at that time. But instead of having, we couldn't afford to have them printed, but printed was twice as much. I say a couple of dollars, it was usually twice as much. So we Xeroxed everything, and they really couldn't tell anything, but it had Jane Fonda talking and all that kind of thing. Okay. Okay, in 1980, uh, this was our Board of Trustees. This is from Marv Wagner. Uh, close. Please find a sample contract that you can use for the preparation for the governor's rep representative contract with National Safe Town Center. Of course, each contract would have to be modified to conform with the individual state's requirement, but this sample should be, serve as a good starting point. If there's anything further I can do, please call me. Marv was an attorney, of course, and he was also with NHTSA, and we had to prepare a contract is if we were going to go like with South Dakota and other states and getting 402 funding for our people, we had to prepare that. A lot of work. We're going to take a little break and we're going to start with 1981. Okay. Now we're going to start with 1981. Yeah, it took some time to have a little din din. It's very good. It's a meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Okay, 1981. <clears throat> First thing I have here is a proposal. Now, a dozen, I don't know. I think this is one we submitted to the foundations. And uh, we had to list all the organizations that we worked in cooperation with. And, oh, there they are. There's an awful lot of them. Action for Child Transportation Safety, Action for Children's Television, American Academy of Pediatrics, American Association for Automotive Medicine, American Association of Motor Vehicle Administration, American Optometric Association, American Optometric Association of Women's Auxiliary, American Safety Belt Council, American Society of Safety Engineers, Automotive Information Council, Bicycle Federation, Consumer Federation of America, Highway Users Federation, Industrial Commission of Ohio, Institute for Traffic Safety Management and Research, Institute for Highway Safety, International Association of Chief of Police, International Association of Fire Chiefs, International Year of the Child, Motorcycle Safety Foundation, yeah, yeah we had it in there, we worked with them, they, Dr. Charles uh, Hartman was very, very nice to us, spoke at some of my seminars, National Association for the Education of Young Children, National Association of Governors Highway Safety representative. See why we used NHTSA and NAEYC and all the other others. You just never, never get anything done doing this. Uh, National Association of Women Highway Safety Leaders. National Burn Victim Foundation. National Center for Volunteer Action. National Clearinghouse for Drug Abuse Information. National Commission on Resource for Youth. The National Community Education Association (NCEA). National Conference on Christians and Jews, National Council on Black Child Development, Black National Council on Year-Round Education, National Education Association, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, National JCs, National JCS, at that time there were two, National Safety Council, National Sh Sheriff's Association, National Society for the Prevention of Blindness, 
Physicians for Automotive Safety, Pilots International, which is a civic organization, uh, Police Athletic League, Professional Private Police, Transportation Research Board, TRIP, Top Rank, United States Consumer Product Safety, Youth Traffic Safety Council, and all. I see also we didn't have in there Kiwanians and other uh, Rotarians and other organizations. I notice in here Top Rank in, uh, Incorporated. Uh, if I don't put this in here, this is a big, big reminder, and I definitely, definitely want this in the final copy of the video. Top Rank was the organization uh, up with Muhammad Ali when I met his um, PR man in New Orleans. And that's a wonderful, wonderful story and situation. I have pictures and a whole file on Top Rank in, in the file in, in Cleveland. A whole folder, I should say, in the file in Cleveland. Um, but it, that definitely is going to be in there in the new file, <clears throat> in the final video. Okay, we had to put problem statement assessment of needs. Um, is our program involved? Our organization responsible has increased tenfold. And we have over 600 programs in 1980. And uh, I had to, to list statistical data how many children die from cancer, birth defects. Homicide, we use National Safety Council figures every year on that. Proposal abstract. Now, under this proposal abstract, all these, this underneath here is office facilities, operating expenses, progress report, the slide presentation, semi-annual magazine, educational films, statistical research, research development of materials, semi-annual teen, teenage magazine, teenage instructor shirt, children's materials, training seminars, National Safety Town Week, and promotional activities. These are all the things that uh, we wanted to do. And with each tab, and again, we had big tabs. This is with each tab. Okay, here's office facilities number one. Proposal digest uh, was National Safe Town Center is in desperate need of a larger facility as current facilities are extremely inadequate. Uh, is a set of pictures, a thousand words, and we can close the pictures, and we can close the pictures of me sitting on the boxes and, and, and Jack in a crowded area, because uh, that's what we were working with. That we needed larger offices and so forth, benefits and results, publicity and credits. We wanted 800 square feet and $9 a square foot for you would have been $7,200. And then uh, printing expenses that we would need for the office, the slide presentation, the equipment, uh, travel expenses, and all for the attending meetings to prepare was $16,820. That would be for, uh, for that particular one. Progress report, slide presentation, community relations, proposal digest, um, a printed progress report is the most essential document for companies they wanted to know at the end of the year, yearly report, all that. I suggest for this one to, to um, promote the slide presentation, to do community relations. One person for a year, the salary was uh, $12,480. Okay. On and on. A semi-annual magazine, I needed someone for 13 weeks, uh, uh, 26 weeks. She would Half the time she would do this. And half the time they would, she would work, be working on educational films. So it was a two, and their salary was uh, fifteen thousand dollars for a year. So it wasn't, but that's what we had to do and break it down that way. Exactly what we needed for each particular person. And as I said, this none of them went out like this. They were all done with beautiful colored tabs, A, B, C, and listed, and cellophane cover and binder. They all looked real neat. We, I think we wasted more than a tree for the environmentalist. I was sick about it because I didn't like doing all the work and I don't like cutting trees down and we don't have to do them. All right, there's no date on this, but it says, again, we must ask our assistant, we, we must ask your assistance and suggestions. Because we are tired of struggling to get money from people, we would like your opinion on instituting the following policies. We sent this out to our board members, our coordinators, uh, just to get some input. New invoice procedures will go into effect March 1st, 1981, due to numerous late payments and outstanding accounts. Our new policy states that a check must accompany your order for first year 
operational packet and for the continuing year, yearly operational packet. Con consignment materials will still be shipped with the initial order and a check must be forwarded within 10 days upon completion of your Safety Town program. So that remained the same. But we were shipping all these things out, all everything on consignment, sending the order out, and then the people in the guy would send the money in. And because of change of chairmanships with JCs, we found, found mo mainly with the JCs um, and JCs, but because of the change of chairmanship at an odd time, uh, the new chairman didn't know anything about the bills. The old chairman either moved out of town or was transferred. It was really just uh, very bad business-wise, but we got through it. Okay. Uh, I have here, during the past three years, we have spent five to six months of our time collecting past due accounts, and that was to the cost of telephone bills, our secretary's salary, postage, and all was. Okay. And it's a P.S. Now that 402 funding is available, we have our first contract with South Dakota under belts. We really feel that this is the turning point, and we have to make, uh, implement these procedures. Okay, remember last uh, year we talked about that Matrix was going to do, go and sell our materials for us. We came out with a real nice sign and included that in our newsletter to our people. It's the National Safety Town Center is proud to announce its affiliation with Matrix International. While you may be very familiar with Matrix International through the years of dedicated and service in the safety field, we would like to take this opportunity to introduce you to James Wobart and Brian Lesjak as our official representatives. The expertise of these gentlemen and their staff is a tremendous asset to our organization. Their priorities are to deal directly with the governor's representatives, highway safety, and helping to promote Safety Town throughout each state as an official registered credit and certified program, February 1st, 1981. And we sent that to the governor's reps as well. Okay, <clears throat> nothing, as I said, they were in existence about a year, and. Uh, Funding was badly cut, at the, I think, the next year in Washington. And uh, a lot of people couldn't buy the product, so they had to fall. February 18, 1981. Okay. Dear Safety Town friend, this looks like another one of just uh, consignment information. Okay. Yeah, just giving them a, a, a fundraising and consignment information. April 9th, 1981, here's one article. Um, this, we wanted some new um, posters for Clancy, some additional ones. We had the four, but we wanted to add another four on four different topics. So we asked the Solon High School students to come up with some ideas. Um, they came up with them, but nothing that we really we're excited about so we didn't do anything with it. Okay, we were talking about, uh, I'm not sure what the topic were, but they had uh, Clancy done so poorly that we just, everybody had him like more of a clown type thing. May 8th, 1981, National Safety Town Center. This is from W. Uh, William W. Fulmer, resident manager of the Continental Forest Industry in Melvindale, Corrugated Division of Melvindale, Michigan. Okay, let me see. I, there must be a letter before that, but it says, Dear Dorothy, it was so nice of you to send me your very complimentary letter concerning our interest in safety. So there's another letter missing somewhere. Uh, as you had shown interest as to the financial numbers that this organization saved during 1980 on safety, I present the following facts. <clears throat> we were able to run to... Okay. okay. We're back. Had to take a, a little break because we had someone at the door. And now we're back. It's Friday, February 13th, and it's approximately 11.30 a.m. Grandpa is out doing lots of singing valentines today and um, for the Sarasota chapter. And I'm going to try to do quite a few years on this and get this done. Okay, so I left off here with this letter from Mr. Fulmer uh, about uh, presenting the facts. And I'm going to read just a, a real small paragraph to show you 
how the corporate people were looking at safety, and this is still back in 1981. And if you can imagine, when I was approaching them in the 60s and 70s, it was even more difficult because I, they were looking at it from this standpoint, and I never even thought to approach it from this standpoint, from the financial benefit of work hours lost from the corporation thing. That was all new to me. Okay, so here's what he said in presenting the facts. We were able to run one year without a lost time accident. This allowed us to work with six less employees during the calendar year. This was calculated by the total number of hours saved, considering that a person worked a 40-hour week compared to the prior year. With the average cost of an employee being 23528 it generated a savings of $141,168. See, now that's how they were thinking, and no, no way in my wildest dreams did I ever think when I started Safety Town that I would have to start looking at this aspect before I would get any type of financial support from a corporation to turn it down into their, into their way of thinking and their terminology, work hours lost. How are accidents going to help prevent them? I know, I was talking about kids, they're not working, it should be completely different, it's an educational thing. But again, you have to remember, men in those days were strictly business oriented and women mainly took care of the children. So they had no idea of education and child development as I was talking to them about. But again, uh, Dorothy, it says again, Dorothy, I want to thank you for your interest in us and commend you for your work in this area. Okay, so we did that. This is a nice letter from Lori Mathis. Uh, she was chairman of a safety committee in Russellville, Missouri. Uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, thank you for sending the Russellville Safety Town plaque to me. It's, it is truly a beautiful work of art. James Watson, whom you know, made arrangements for the plaque to be presented at the Missouri Governor's Conference on Occupational Safety. In, in Jersey City, Mr. Tom Decker, Corporate Dr Secretary of the National Safety Council, presented the plaque. Several representatives of the news media were in attendance, as were approximately 220 delegates. Now more people have heard about Safety Town. Again, thank you. Hope to meet you sometime in the future. If you're ever through our part of Missouri, please call. But um, this is uh, the beautiful plaque that we sent out. Uh, when they became a registered credit and certified program, which we did in 1980. And, um, but to have, have it presented by a top official from the National Safety Council at a big event was, was great that they were recognizing Safety Town. And um, this is just, in, uh, I typed up something for them to present when they presented the plaque to uh, Loretta for them to say something because sometimes people just were at a loss. So we always sent a nice little news release. Said, I'm a, a safe town plaque to Lori Mathis. I'm extremely delighted to have this opportunity on behalf of Bill Cosby, Honorary Chairman, and Dorothy Schlatt, President of the National Safety Council, to present this prestigious plaque to Russellville Safety Town. The Russellville Safe Town is sponsored by the Strington Corinthian 4 H Club. It represents a community involvement effort which signifies accomplishments accomplishment of people working together because they care. Like the National Safety Council, Safety Town is a volunteer safety nonprofit group. Uh, incidentally, this 4-H group has been nominated for recognition by the Youth Activities Department of the National Safety Council. This is something that was given to us by James Watson. It is the sincere wish of the National Safety Town Center that this plaque be hung in a place of prominence in the club's meeting place. Thank you, Loretta, for sponsoring the program and most of all for caring and sharing about the safety of our precious children, which was our slogan way back when. Okay, June 7th, 1981, this is um, the Sunday Sun-Times. It's Nina Katz, it, I have no idea where this safety town is. It's gotta be in the Illinois area. This had to be in uh, one of the, let's see here, the Sunday Sun-Times, Chicago Sun-Times, big paper. Course, courses teach children safety rules. And I'm so happy to hear always the, the teaching and learning and about safety in children rather than the playing uh, in the cars or of that type of thing. Even though they focused, uh, they still like to focus on the cars, 
But you notice we had, you know, well, you can't tell here, but here the children are, there's one in the car putting on a seatbelt and the other ones are looking at him. And then she lists the various safety towns in Illinois that had programs at the time. It was a very nice article. Okay, this might be a little bit better. That's, this is actually, <laughs> this is actually this article, uh, but it's in a different newspaper. And this one says, Safety Town Co Course Teaches Safety Through Participation. But it's exactly the same, same wording, just a different title. And I, this is even a nicer title. And this appeared in the Chicago Sun-Times on June 7th but a different version, but they could, I guess each newspaper, local newspaper, could change the title, and that is great. I love that. Safety Town Course, the Safety Town Course teaches safety through participation. Made, made my heart sing. Made my heart sing, and these are just copies. Copies of this, and we'll put these all together. Okay. Uh, you know what, I think I'm going to do one of these this way, because I like it that way. Okay. Now, uh, here's an article, and this has a little story to it. It's a little humorous, a little sad, a little aggravating, a little frustrating, but um, here is a picture of, this is Chuck Zawatsky, the tall man standing in the center. He was vice president, uh, let me get his title right here, uh, vice president of community affairs for Meritress. And then the man was Patrolman Herman Morris, who was in the center here, police officer CMHA, and myself, and then we had four children from CMHA. <clears throat> this was in Wednesday, June 24th, 1981. Now, what transpired here is I had sent a letter to Ameritress, to Mr. Chuck Zawatsky, uh, Charles Zawatsky. I don't recall where I received his name from, but anyway, I sent him a letter asking him if we could, uh, that we were going to be working with CMHA, and since it was an inner city program, if Ameritrust could contribute $500 to buy uh, 500 graduation hats, I think at that time they were a dollar a piece. No, I'm sorry, they were two dollars a piece. I think 250 kids were going to graduate through Safety Town. And on graduation day, could they give them the graduation hats? Okay, now that was just the cost, $500. We weren't, the center wasn't making a penny. I sent him a letter. He sent me back and said that there, you know, was no interest. He was sorry and so forth. I have the letter in the file from Meritrust, and we'll add that in here too. Um, so I happened to be downtown one time for a meeting, and I called him, and I said, you know, I know you, it was rejected, but could I come and talk to you maybe about some other possibilities? So he's very, very cordial, and he saw me within the next half hour, 45 minutes. I was right around the corner. He's very nice. We sat down, and he said, well, he was uh, the vice president of community affairs. The person who made the decision as far as the contributions was Mr. Bruce Akers, and that he was really a difficult man to convince on some things, especially new issues. So he arranged very nicely, gave me some information about Bruce Akers, and I found some on my own. Um, his political affiliation and, and that kind of thing. You always had to know something about that to relate to it. And uh, he arranged a meeting for me to meet with Bruce Akers. So we met, I went in complete, and I took Jacqueline with me, and I took Katie, Katie Dolan, uh, Katie O'Toole with me at the time. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to check on, on who else. I think I might have taken someone else. I'm not sure, but I know those two, Katie and, and Jacqueline, went with me. And we sat around the table with Bruce. I took a little video, showed him a little video uh, of what the program was, because he, he had not really, he'd heard of Safe Town, but didn't know it. And uh, told him what I wanted to do. A very, very difficult man. I would ask, I would explain something, and he would ask a question that was relevant, but way off, way around the basis uh, somehow. It was just, really difficult to follow. So we left there, you know, rather confused. And um, he was going to look at the material and then have another meeting. We did that, had another meeting, and I said, look, we'd like these hats. At the second meeting, I said, look, we'd like these hats for these children. 
uh, it would give you publicity. And he said, I said, but give us publicity and help the program and so forth. And he said, uh, people come in here all the time and tell me that they're going to give us publicity and they never, we never get anything, get one little line somewhere. And I said, Mr. Akers, I promise you, I will get an article in the newspaper. We will get you on television. It will be more than a little line. He said, we hear that all, I hear that all the time. What I had to do to convince this net man, I remember I'm spending all this time, time for meetings, not only my time, but Jackie's time and Katie's time that we're paying. I had to go to the Cleveland, to this Cleveland Press, and get in writing that they would do a story. I had to go to the TV channel, I think it was TV8 at the time, I'm not too sure, and get in writing that they were going to do, they would come out and cover the story. Okay? Take all this for $500, and we weren't making a penny because it was going for the printing, for the tassel, for the material.